Welcome back. Today I am going to be reacting to a TV show that I've been looking forward to watching for a really long time. It is War on Waste Australia. We're into season two now and I haven't been able to catch up on any episodes yet. So I'm going to watch season two, episode one right now. And I thought I'd bring you guys along so you can uh, react to it with me. So if you have Australian Eye View, you can catch up on these episodes. Go ahead and put it on if you want to watch it with me. And yeah. Let's get into it. All right, I'm pressing play. It's loading. I've got snacks and tea as well. They're doing a recap of season one. I remember that banana farmer one. It was really sad. Who makes him in scrolls? Because you need a snack when you're watching a show. This is really good. They're talking about changes that have happened as a result of season one. Produce not needing to be perfect in some of the stores. More and more people using keep cups. They're giving like an overview of season two now, including recycling issues. Mm. He's picking up rubbish on a riverbank and he's shouting out the brands. Talking about plastic straws. This is going to be an awesome series. Mobile phones. So if you're watching their hashtag. It's war on waste at you. I can't tweet while I'm watching because I'm filming on my phone. But I'll probably do updates during the week. Okay, so they've finished the recap of last season, the overview of this season, and now they're jumping straight into how much of a concern plastic is. Only 9% of plastic is recycled, 12% incinerated, holy moly, 79% of plastic goes to landfills. And that's if people put it in the bin. Oh wow, they're opening up this big truck full of plastic bags, full of plastic rubbish, and I think they're on a beach. Oh, I've seen this clip on Facebook. I think I shared it. I'm going to have some tea. And they're putting all this plastic on a giant footprint on the beach. Footprint, that was clever. I 
Okay, so it's takeaway containers, soft drink bottles, soft plastics. That's all the stuff they're putting on the beach. They're putting a ton on Manly Beach. so much rubbish and I bet if I remember this right they're going to ask people how long they think it took to create all that rubbish wow. I'm having peppermint tea if you're wondering Oh, you can see how many McDonald's drills there are because they're so easy to identify. <clears throat> That's a lot of stools. It's a huge footprint. Right, it's in the shape of a footprint. Okay, they're guessing how long it takes to create that much plastic and throw it away. Create that much rubbish and throw it away. Huh, I think Lily's joining me. Hey, Lily. My cat. Lower than a monk. Lower than a day. Less than 10 minutes. One minute. That's just Australia. That's crazy. That's shocking. <clears throat> One guy just said, you don't think about it, do you? And that's, that's the problem. We don't think about it. Whole beach would be buried in plastic in one day. If everything we threw out was moved to that beach, it would be covered in one day. So much of that can be recycled, but it's not.
That is so true. This lady just said it's designed to last forever. Plastics last forever, but we only use it for a couple of minutes and then we throw it away. Wow. That's not even including commercial waste. Okay, they're talking about water bottles specifically now. We buy a billion every year plastic water bottles. Single use ones. Most of them end up in landfill or water waste. Water waste. They're doing this ad for a new water bottle. Mm. <laughs> okay, so they just did this really funny parody ad. You got okay, you got you gotta watch the show. It's real I can't even explain that one. It was really funny. Okay, so they're disguising the host. I think his name is Craig. He's going to take like promo bottles of Robinet water. Robinet, they're saying it's French for tap water. He's going to see if the public can tell it's tap water. No one's taking it though. Asking people how often do they buy bottled water, and one lady just said every day. He's asking them what they'd pay for the bottle of water he's showing them. They're like four dollars, five dollars. Wow, so many people are saying they buy a bottle of water every day. Okay, kids are doing a taste test. Mm. My little kid just said it tasted better than the San Pellegrino his mum was holding. The mum just said it tastes like it's from the mountains. People are saying it's refreshing. It's tap water. I know there's a fluoride debate with water. I don't know enough about it myself. All I know is I've drank tap water in my life and I haven't had any negative consequences of it so far. <laughs> I just talked to a French guy. 
<laughs> who, who could say what their name meant? People are really surprised that it's tap water because it tastes really good. And it's, one girl just said, yeah, it's psychological because it's in a fancy bottle. And I think that's true. Mm. He's talking around how if the people took that bottle home and just refilled it from the tap every day, they'd save over a thousand dollars a year if they were buying originally buying tap water um bottled water every day. much cheaper, so much better for the environment. You can get filtered drink bottles now, or filter jugs, or filter taps. Oh, going to the science guy. They're doing the old test the water brands. See which one's better. <clears throat> it's really interesting. They're talking about how tap water has to be tested for safety and then bottled water doesn't have the same tests. My cat's playing with the curtains if you can hear it. This science guy is saying they could get away with filtering regular tap water, putting it in a bottle and selling it, and they'd be allowed to call it pure water. Okay, so he's testing water just from his tap at the university. And then they've got Fiji, Pump, what looks to be a, like a, a generic brand, Mount Franklin. I can't see the others. Nature's best, that was that other brand. Okay, so Pump and Fra Mount Franklin wouldn't pass tap water tests. 
Which is weird because the Mount Franklin is a brand I would buy all the time when I was buying bottled water because it looks really good. Wow, the fluoride comparison is interesting. They think nature's best is most likely filtered tap water. So they're saying the only benefit consumers get really from bottled water is that they're, it's convenient, but not for the environment. They're using a hashtag BYO water bottle. I am a big believer in bring your own water bottle. Oh, so much rubbish. Look at all the bottles he collected in 10 minutes out by the river. Oh, he's taking all those plastic bottle rubbish and he's sending them to a politician. No help from the government. That's shameful. Hello, Lily. You can come sit with me if you want. I think Lily's going to join us. Oh, they're doing a five day blitz cleaning up the river. Ocean Crusaders. I haven't heard of them before. You can sit with me, Lou. Come on. It's International Cat Day today. World Cat Day. This is my cat, Lily. Five tons of rubbish in five days. No, no, don't eat my scarf. Don't eat my scarf. No, 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 no. So they did this last year and they're going to compare how much rubbish they picked up in 10 minutes on the Yarra compared to how much rubbish they picked up in 10 minutes last year. I can't wait to see. I hope it's gotten better. Oh, there's heaps of rubbish at the side on the riverbank. Polystyrene, plastic. Most of it is single use bottles. Oh, I love that he's naming and shaming the brand. I know it's not the brand's fault that their bottles are getting thrown out, but they're unnecessary plastic bottles. So if they exist, they become rubbish.
That is horrible. He's shouting out the brand names, saying it's free advertising. So he's saying in Melbourne or Victoria, there's no incentive to return your plastic bottles. There's no, like in New South Wales, you can put them in a bottle deposit unit and get paid a couple of cents per bottle. So the, there's an incentive to not just throw it in landfill. But I, they don't, it looks like they don't have it in Victoria. This is really creepy. Isn't it, Lil? Heaps of polystyrene too, like broken up pieces. They're using this special vacuum machine to clean up all the rubbish. <coughs> yeah, if we're at a point where we have to vacuum our riverbanks, that's ridiculous. I hope after watching this that everyone watching is like just gonna take my own drink bottle from now on imagine the change that would make wow so much rubbish That lady had a good point. So much of that rubbish is unnecessary plastic. I'm cold now that the cat's gone. There we go. There are tons of bikes as rubbish. They're those share bikes. Those ones where you just kind of like pick them up and ride them and then put them back. People just use them once and chuck them. There are so many bikes. That is terrible. So now they're talking about how China isn't accepting our recycling anymore. 
To be honest, I was really surprised when I found out that's how we recycled. I thought we recycled in Australia. I didn't think we sold it to China. <clears throat> Our rubbish should be our responsibility. My dog's barking. They bark every time another dog walks past. Okay, so they're talking about household recycling now in the yellow bin. They're talking about how confusing it is to know what is recyclable in your yellow bin. And he's talking about meat trays and how depending on the tray it either can or can't be recycled in your yellow bin. And it's just, it's too hard for people to know. He's looking into getting that sort of packaging stamped with instructions on how to recycle it. Okay, so some of these places do have a stamp on the packaging already. So black meat trays don't get spotted in the recycling plant, so they just skip over them. Don't buy black meat trays anymore. Yeah, that little stamp's not very visible. They have like 10 trays and only two of them, they're sure, can be recycled. Good point. I'm going to look for those labels now. Wow, that meat tracking was really, really unexpected. Oh, they're talking about the Queen banning plastic straws and stuff. I love that.
Oh, they're talking about Molly Steer. She's a nine-year-old trying to raise awareness about the damage that plastic straws can do. Yeah, they're walking around restaurants and pubs and there's just straws randomly in the gardens of restaurants. Just plastic straws just thrown on the ground. But I just found five or six at one restaurant. Oh, she got her school to stop using plastic straws straight away. I wish we didn't have straws at my school, my kids' school. Oh, they just found heaps more. There's so many. Wow, she got 90 schools to give up single-use plastic straws. She says she finds mostly Macca's straws. They've got so many straws now picked up in the ground, they can't even hold them anymore. Mm. Yeah, they're in the water too. Okay, they're counting how many they found on one trip out and about in cans together. Hundred and seventy nine. Oh, that was half an hour. I thought they did that all day. Hundred and seventy nine in half an hour. Just two of them, too. I love this show. The thing is, they show these beautiful, like, um, glimpses of the beaches at Cairns, and you look at it and you go, that is beautiful, unharmed land and beach, but then you look closer and it's just, there's, you know, rubbish and injured turtles, and you just, unless you're looking for it, you don't see it, and I think that might be the problem with raising awareness. People don't believe it till they really see it right in front of their face.
they're talking about how turtles, when they eat plastic, it's really harmful to them. And once they've eaten it, you can't remove it from a turtle. You can't operate on them. Wow. Wow. Oh, wow. They're showing all this plastic that they ended up taking out of one turtle that looks like the turtle didn't make it because how else would they get the plastic back out? So much plastic consumed. That's horrible. Wow. Oh, so much plastic pollution. I really wish they would just ban the creation of new plastic so that we had no choice but to do without or recycle or reuse what's already existing. Just a world a worldwide ban on creating it. We dealt without plastic, what, 50s, 40s, 30s, 20s? People lived without it before. And I say that as a person who struggles with emetophobia, so I have a bit of a germ thing and you know so I would have to make a lot of sacrifices mental health wise but I still think it's worth it my garbage chucks coming outside right now we don't have as much rubbish as we used to because of this show always oh, going into pubs So the pub's talking about how they go through about 10,000 stores a month. They're asking the pub owners if they would be willing to try supporting Molly's, Molly's Straw No More project by having straws under the counter instead of on top of the counter and only using straws when they're asked for them. That's, that's a clever first step. Mm -hmm. I wonder if they're going to track it and see if people actually ask for straws. I drink drinks without straws all the time. My lipstick doesn't disappear. Although I don't wear dark lipstick, I just have like light pink lipstick, so maybe that's why. Oh, they're getting on board. They're giving it a try. Okay, so they're at a pub now that's been straw-free for six months.
Oh, okay, so they have some paper straws in case someone really needs one. <clears throat> so good. I totally get that, that, you know, there will be people that need a plastic straw. You know, a paper straw won't work. They might have a disability. They might not be able to get a hold of their own reusable straw. I, I think stainless steel straw would help. But I get that it's not something that everybody might be able to do. But maybe the owner should be on people who need straws to have their own and reuse them and wash them as much as they can. It would certainly cut it down if we only used them if we needed to. Oh, is that a school? I love our local school, but we've, we've done nothing in terms of reducing waste. Nothing. Nothing that I have seen. Nothing I'm aware of. Okay, so he's going to a new school. They're setting up a whole bunch of coloured tarps on the ground outside. Oh, they're taking a week's worth of school rubbish and they're going to separate it. Such a good idea. It's a high school, okay. Oh, that's a big job. So they've got 30 kids helping. <laughs> they've got masks and gloves. See, if we reduce the waste, they wouldn't need to go through all those rubber gloves and ma plastic masks either. Oh, he's getting in the skip bin. Oh, there's maggots. Oh. oh no. All the teachers in the skip bin too, I love that. See, all I know to do at school is to send the kids with, um, you know, like we do home baking and we put them in the reusable containers. I really like the new food ones. But my kids still come home and they're like, Mom, how come we don't have packet snacks like our friends do? So they'll still have those occasionally and then they'll put them in the, the packet in the bin. They won't bring it home so I can send it to Coles for the recycling. Okay, so they've got a week's worth of rubbish out of all the bins. Lots of plastic containers. They're going to jump in and start sorting. Oh, there's so much rubbish. And you know what? That would be totally normal amount for schools. So they've got a tarp for food scraps, one for recyclables. Paper and cardboard on the blue mat. Wow, heaps of e-waste, like electronics waste. So many plastic bottles. Mm. 
Wow, they have found $60 worth of plastic bottles in a week. Like if you return them in the deposit scheme that New South Wales has, $60 worth in one week. That money could go to the school. That's amazing. Soft plastics, that's a scrunchable stuff. Heaps of unopened food brought in from home too. Heaps of food not being eaten. Seventy eight kilos of paper. Wow. And you can't just you can't just judge this one school. Like all schools are doing this. All homes are doing this. Lots of homes, lots of schools, not all of them. Okay, plastic straws at the school. Three hundred and two straws. Three hundred and two, wow. So many old videos. Ah! So many old computer discs. E waste is something I've not even thought about. Okay, so plastic bottles they ended up finding $173 worth in one week. As in, you deposit those back in the deposit scheme, and the school would get 170. What? What did I say? 178? 173? That money could go to the school. That's amazing. Wow. Well, they're talking about the canteen hopping on board with reducing the waste. So this will be really interesting to see the changes they make. So the school's on board with a composting plan, reducing the use of single-use plastic, recycling more. I love that. Wow. Okay, so the episode looks like it's done. They're just doing an overview of next week, and it looks like it's mobile phones. Nice playing ringtones. Vast furniture. Oh, 
is going to follow the waist. Oh, he's going to go to McDonald's. Oh, there's some bloopers at the end. Wow. Okay. That, that was an amazing show. Okay, so season one I was really impressed with last year. Season two, episode one, I love that they covered so much. I love that they covered, you know, it, the fact that it's not worth buying single-use plastic bottles anymore for things like water. I love that they went to schools. I love that they really just zoomed in so you could see the effect of straws. I just thought that was an amazing, this is an amazing show. I'm going to be watching again, so hopefully you had fun watching with me. If you've just watched me today and you didn't actually watch the show, go and watch the show, and then next time, Let's watch it together. So you can stream this on iView. You can play it anytime you want, day or night. We can watch together and you can comment below and let me know what you think of the show. What's had the most impact on you? Have you made any good changes for the environment since you started watching shows like this? I'd really love to know your opinion on this sort of stuff. And yeah, let's do this again really soon. I'll be back watching and reacting to episode two of season two of War on Waste Australia very soon. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please do hit subscribe and tap the notification bell. And that way, when I upload for the next episode, you'll be aware of it. <laughs> Make sure you hit thumbs up if you like this video. Thank you for sticking all the way through it with me if you stayed for the whole hour. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.